to the podcast. Andrea Gribble here. We are in the middle of summer 2021 and guess what we're going to talk about? Today we're going to talk about prioritizing you. You as the school communicator as you look into this new school year with all of the excitement it's time to put some focus on your own health. And I'm so excited to have Mark Mohamedor um, uh, with us from Chasing the Sun. Uh, he has an inspiring story of his own that led him on this path to serving others. Um, he's really gonna share you know, four basic things to think about when we talk about our health. Um, we're gonna talk about setting boundaries and prioritizing goals and how that all fits in with social media. I'm very, very excited for you to learn from him. And I hope um, that if you are a listener to this podcast, you have signed up for our free newsletter. Um, do you know that we have a newsletter that goes out every other week, totally free, full of inspiration, ideas, posts from other schools, upcoming events that we're going to be leading. And that link is in the show notes. You can also just head over to my website, socialschoolforedu.com. Get signed up there. You will be connected to all of the goodness that we share absolutely free. So without further ado, let's get started with this week's podcast interview. All right, before we get started, we're going to start with our K-12 PR tip like we do every week, right? We've got great little tips for you. Let's think about captions on our videos. Mark's actually going to bring it up in the conversation towards the end. And, you know, closed captioning your videos is important. It's important uh, because of accessibility, people with hearing impairments being able to know what's going on with the videos that you share. It's also important because did you know that over 80% of videos are watched without the sound on? Um, you might be saying, no way, Andrea, that's not true. Yes, it is. Think about your own habits. You watch so many things that you'd never even turn the video on or the, the audio on, right? You, you never turn that, that volume up. So you can auto-generate captions through native platforms like Facebook and YouTube. They have an auto-generation feature, which is pretty accurate. And if you need to fix anything, you can go in there. Um, and you can also pay to have it done where it's a little more accurate. We use a service called rev.com. It's rev.com. And you can check that out. Um, and that would be a great place to start. Uh, to make sure, you know, this year as you head into the new year that you are focusing on that accessibility piece, the closed captions, it will help with the messaging that you are putting out. And so I urge you to do that. If you've got more questions, certainly let us know. Uh, we provide a lot of resources over at socialschoolforedu.com, our blog, links to our video tips and more. Um, and we're always here to serve you. So uh, without without further delay, let's get started. Mark has a lot of great information to share. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Andrea, thank you so much for having me. It's, it's truly an honor. Yeah, Mark Mohamedpour, right? Absolutely. I kind of did it right. I was scared before we started, um, but I'm so excited for you to join us and join our community. Man, the topic you're talking about these days is pretty uh, needed right now with um, with our school, you know, communicators in this basically state of emergency for the past, what, 15, 16 months. Absolutely. And, and even before when I launched the company in 2019, so my focus is on the communicator and the PR professional to to prioritize their well-being and I saw the opportunity even before COVID and especially thinking about public information officers and, and people that represent school districts. And even before COVID, knowing all the emergencies that, that this group have to deal with, I, I knew that there was a need to address it. But Andrew, you're absolutely right. The last year and a half, I, I just am in absolute awe of what this community has done. And it's going to take a long time to process, um, but I, I, I've just been floored, and 
it's just yeah, important. Abs absolutely. You can see my uh, my sign behind me for everybody, anybody watching our, our YouTube channel. My favorite essential workers are our school PR leaders, and I've gotten to watch that firsthand. Um, well, Mark, some of our listeners may not know who you are. And so why don't you just kind of just share your background and maybe how you got into PR um, and, and maybe we'll, we'll lead it around to what you're doing today. Absolutely. I am a proud Portland, Oregon metro area resident, lifelong. I've, I've never left and I don't think I ever will. <laughs> I love it here. Anybody's welcome to, to come out here at any time and, and, and say hello. I was so much into journalism in high school that I wanted to go to school to be a, a, a journalism major. I wanted to be the next Mike Wallace on 60 Minutes. I wanted to be a Portland Trailblazers beat writer. Uh, I, I chose the University of Portland here in, in the Portland metro area to pursue that. I realized halfway through my freshman year that my passion was leaning towards public relations. And, and part of it was the, the, what I had learned and understood is just no two days are ever the same. And, and studying that in the late 90s and fast forwarding to, to 2021 when we're recording this, that's absolutely the, <laughs> the case. Nothing has changed there. So I, I graduated with an organizational communication degree, and I started my career at a firm that became Weber Shanwick. At the time, it was a firm called Benjamin Group, but through a series of, of mergers and acquisitions in the early 2000s, it became Weber Shanwick and had the opportunity to work on a number of technology accounts like Microsoft and Samsung. I worked a lot with the US Army, helping to tell the story of the Army soldier. It was a very proud time in, in the first part of my decade on the professional level. On a personal level, Andrea, I was, I, I, was, I was not doing well on the health front. I had gained a significant amount of weight. And by the time 2007 hit, I was 350 pounds. And on the scale, it was bad enough but I was, I, uh, how I was feeling was, was terrible. I had sleep apnea at night and I had trouble breathing, trying to walk up a flight of stairs was miserable. Trying to fly from Portland to New York to, to, to staff a press tour, sitting a middle seat and coach. I was really scared for my life, Andrea, and yeah. I knew I needed to make a change. And that happened when I proposed to my now wife, Christine, and around December, 2007, I was fortunate that she says yes. And I realize I'm living for not just me, but but for her and her family and, and everybody else. And I, I needed to make a change. And so over the course of, of that following year in 2008, I made a number of, of small incremental changes to my diet and exercise. I lost 110 pounds by the time of our wedding in September 2008. And I've, I've kept that off ever since. And I'm, I'm now closer to 200 and I've done it all naturally. So between 2008 and today, a number of, of things had, had happened. One was I, I, sh I moved from Weber Shanwick to Edelman. So I continued to, to work on the agency side, working for a number of, of, of different clients. I also started getting much more engaged with PRSA. And it was a very active community here locally in Portland. Had the Can honor. you tell us what PRSA is? Because yes. our listeners might not know. Thank you. So that's the Public Relations Society of America. Okay. So um, very active here locally, was honored to, to serve as the, the chapter he, president here in 2016. And I started having this epiphany, Andrea, uh, a few years ago when I was starting to think about my own weight loss journey and thinking about the, um, you know, the profession and how stressful we are, my relationship with PRSA and, and what that was going to look like going forward. And so I, I started chatting with some folks and a friend of mine suggested that I, I study to become a certified personal trainer, just to kind of go through the process of kind of how I got here. <laughs> and so I got, I got certified through the American Council on Exercise. I received a follow-up certification for health coaching. I was still very happy to Edelman, but the opportunity started to present itself a couple of years ago where I, I can help tell my story and help my PR friends, my communicators, my marketers prioritize their well-being so that they can continue to, to meet the business objectives of the organization. Because the reality is we are 
our, our industry, and I say we, you know, I, I include no matter what part of PR you are, no matter what you're doing at a tactical level, it is one of the most stressful professions out there. There's data from CareerCast that ranks PR executives alongside air traffic controllers and surgeons and military personnel as one of the most stressful professions out there. And on the face of it, you say, we're not saving lives, but you see your sign says on your, uh, you have to say essential workers. Even before COVID, I know that our school PR friends were having to craft messages that had to be sent, received, and executed on by their publics that are, are saving lives. We're doing this now over the last year and a half. And we have to acknowledge that, that what we are doing is important. And the school PR professional is a true hero of mine. And it's been an honor over the last year to connect more with this community and and connect with a number of state chapters and have the opportunity to to speak at INSPRA this July in New Orleans. And that's where we're yeah. at today. Yeah, and we're and I'm gonna see you there. And so that's really exciting that we get to be in person this year. Um, okay, so you shared a lot. First of all, um, anybody watching this video, you'll be like, no, you know, Mark looks like the picture of good health. And if you follow him on social media, you're going to see all that energy shine through um, with your posts and the things. Um, but I love your message. Um, and I don't know if you've gotten a chance to meet my friend, Kristen Majette, but Kristen is definitely on this um, uh, journey of, of sharing this, this K-12 PR well and this message because what we've seen, like you said, even before COVID hit, um, there's more and more people getting out of school communications because of the stress level and, um, you know, crafting those messages at the drop of a hat, right? I mean, all of these emergencies happen uh, within our communities even before COVID. And we've got to serve these people because they, they're really good at what they do. Um, but, but it's hard to find that balance, um, not only stress, but that health side of it, right? So um, how can I take care of myself while also taking care of my school community? So um, I just think what you're doing is amazing. And, and you know, what, what has been some of your messages as far as, you know, helping specifically, you know, my, my audience is our school communicators, but, but what's been some of that message that you've shared? Yeah, Andrew. First of all, I've, I, I've, Kristen and I follow each other, and I look forward to, to to meeting her in person one of these days, whether it's at Inspire or elsewhere. I, I think the reality is is that we need more people sharing our stories and leading this discussion. If for nothing else, that our community is going to get something from all of us, right? So I don't have all the answers. Kristen doesn't have all the answers. But as a collective, we're all going to have our own perspectives and people are going to be able to learn from, from each other as a collective. And so the more voices that we can share, whether it's within school PR or, or broader, the, 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 the more that, that we can make sure that we are keeping this top of mind, right? So I have four primary concepts that I teach, not only with my clients, but my workshop attendees is what I'm going to talk about at INSPRA. The first we kind of covered is that we are role models. We, we, we influence people. This is, a, this is a big topic in, in our industry. We are constantly having to fight for budget, respect, have a seat at the table. The, the perception, Andrea, is that we in, in PR and social media are there to clean up messes. But most of our job really is to stop them from happening in the first place. Right. That takes a lot of energy. And so I ask my clients, I ask my workshop attendees, who do you influence? Who are you a role model for? And that, can, and that answer can be on the professional level, it can be on the personal level. But I want people to really enter this discussion bringing their egos with them. How often do we check our egos at the door, Andrew, when we do our job and we're, we're connecting with our principals and our superintendents and our other executives? And I'm not saying that we, we, we can't show a sign of respect. Obviously we do, but the more that we can see ourselves as a trusted advisor, as a business partner, and, and come in and showing that what we're doing, what we're recommending is, is positively impacting the organization, the better. Right. It takes a lot of energy. So that's the first thing. Yeah. The second is talking about what's in our control. So we're strategic 
communicators. We think about these measurable objectives that are follow the SMART method, strategic, time-based, realistic. Obviously, from a social media standpoint, that could be about increasing uh, engagement rate, click through for our newsletter, video views, whatever that is, right? That's based on our research and stuff like that. When it comes to our health and well-being, Andrea, a lot of us put a lot, a lot of pressure on ourselves by putting measurable objectives. I want to lose 10 pounds in three months so I can fit into that dress or my suit for my upcoming high school reunion. I want to gain a certain amount of weight in a certain amount of time. I want to reduce my cholesterol level by 20 points because the doctor told me to. Those are smart objectives. And as long as they're realistic, that, that's great. But we put so much pressure on ourselves. I want us to get tactical. So what's akin to on the communications front, on the social media front, the tweet, the newsletter, the website wireframe, those are completely within our control. So when it comes to our health and well-being, I want us to focus on what's in our control. Now, do I recommend to my PR friends to block out two hours out of their day to exercise? No. How realistic is that? Right. But I can ask people to think about how they can incorporate something for themselves within the life that they have. It can be around water. When people ask me the, one of the first things I should do, drink more water, right? Thinking about how many meetings that they have on their schedule. I can't ask people, Andrea, to cut out 70% of their meetings. That's just not realistic. But what I can do is be proactive and say, how many meetings do you have a week? How many are on camera, right? How many need to be on camera? How many can be audio only walk and talks? Those types of things. So I want people to get tactical, right? So that's my second concept. The third is around time. Our calendar is our life. We are in a service industry, Andrea. We cater to everybody. And that's not just in our professional life, it's in our personal life too, whether we have children, pets, uh, extended family, especially in the era of COVID, right? We're having to be double, triple, quadruple booked. And, and I, and I recognize that, but the reality is our calendar is our life. And if we're not making time for ourselves in a way that's not only realistic, but actionable, that's, it's not going to happen. And there's so many different ways in which to do that, whether that's setting alarms on your phone to blocking out time in your calendar, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I can provide examples left, right, and center, but it's ultimately what works for what works for everybody. I just want to help empower people to, to shift their mindset on that. So that's the right. third. So we talk about and, who we influence. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say when you talk about, you know, setting aside time and for all of this, it's like, I know that I'm going to be more effective if I make the time to take care of myself. So for me, I work out in the morning because I don't give myself a chance to like, you know, talk myself out of it. Um, and if you get into your day, it's just so easy to get away from you. And of course, I don't have small kids anymore. Mine are, mine are a little bit older, so I'm not getting them ready in the morning. But it's like, that's my me time to, to focus on me. And then I know that I'm going to be more productive. So even if I'm really tired and don't want to get out of bed, it's like, I know that it's going to help me have a better day. And so um, uh, that's really, really important to me. Um, and once you get in the habit, then it's not so hard but it's getting in the habit in the first place. So, so keep going. It's, it's getting in the habit and, and, and knowing that you're going to feel better and it's having the confidence of, of getting that done for yourself, which leads me to the fourth, my fourth concept. Of course, as strategic communicators, social media professionals, especially in the era of COVID, we are writing and rewriting crisis plans for our organizations. And I, I want to say that we're, we're built for what we've been dealing with over the last year. Like, seriously, I mean, no one, no one anticipated a global pandemic, right, at the beginning of 2020. At the same time, I know that if anybody is, is prepared to how to deal with this, how to deal with a crisis, it's, it's, it's us. What's our own personal crisis plan when things don't go our way? So, Andrew, you say you worked out in the morning and maybe you get an email or maybe you use a, an internet connected spin bike like I do here, or maybe you woke up and your running shoes have a hole in them. You need to get them fixed. So what's your plan B? 
that's what that's what I want people to implement so that they know beforehand what they're going to do in case of of emergency. So if you schedule that yoga class at 5 p.m. on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it's 4:45, and you know you need to shut down and change your clothes and either you know drive to the location or get your 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 stuff set up here, and you get a text or an email that's going to impact your ability to do that, what are you going to do? Are you going to give yourself grace, which is great, obviously? Are you going to try the next class the next morning? Whatever that is, I want people to implement that and think that through before it happens. Because oftentimes what happens is that that roadblock comes up, we get frustrated, it ruins our day, we overeat, we get frustrated, and the kind of snowballs. So those are my foreign concepts. We influence people, we're role models. We need to get tactical in our control when it comes to our health and well-being. We need to make time for it in a way that is 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 meaningful, not only meaningful for, for us, but um, you know, approachable. And then, what's our own personal crisis plan when things don't go our way? I love it. Really good things to think about. And you know, we do so much planning for all of the things that can happen in a school, right? What what is our own uh, personal plan? I often think, Mark, just and and other people have used it, right? It's the it's the um, face mask in the airplane, right? If that's going down, yep. you don't put it on everybody else first. You're supposed to put the mask on yourself first. But it's so why is it so easy for us to focus our time on taking care of everybody else? instead of trying to look at it and say, I deserve this, I need this. Why is that so hard for us in school communications? It's a really good question. And I, I imagine we probably need to bring some um, psychologists or some sociologists in to, to discuss. <laughs> I, I think a short answer is that because we're in the service industry, we, we want to take care of everybody else. But also by doing so, it makes us feel better makes us feel worthy of, of purpose to be able to say we've, we've taken care of other, other people. And that's, I don't want to say that's a bad thing. I don't want to say that's a bad thing. I don't want to make feel, people feel guilty for, for, for doing that. I just want to make sure that people realize that you can get so much energy to be able to do all of those things if you take care of, of yourself first. Yeah. It's for that purpose. And it's just an yeah. extra step. It's like a mind shift of like, if I take care of myself, then I can take care of everyone else better. I know that when I get, I suffer, um, I have a lot of anxiety, Mark, and, uh, and I, I deal with it. I, I, I'm, I'm doing, doing much better than I used to. Um, when you lose your job, you know, you have to move in with your parents. There's a little anxiety there. Right. Um, but I, I, I enjoy talking about it cause I think it's really important and healthy, um, to be able to do so. But one of the things that helps my anxiety is exercise. Mm -hmm. And so I know that if I have a busy day, I have to prioritize and know that that's going to help me to be able to, you know, better respond, uh, you know, to, to anything that comes my way. Um, but if we can shift that mentality of if I, you know, I'm so proud of taking care of everybody else and getting those accolades, but if I can take care of myself that way, I also deserve a pat on the back, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. So a question, um, you know, we're in the summer months now. And so as we're gearing up for this next school year, which, you know, I really feel the, the energy hopefully will be really high, you know, um, and maybe th schools are going to look, look a lot different than they had to in the last, you know, year and a half. Um, but as we kind of buckle down to get into another school year before that happens, what kind of things would you recommend to our, our listeners out there um, to be able to try to you know, have this mind shift of taking care of themselves this next school year while they're, you know, still doing their job. Do you have, do you have some insight on that? I think it's a really good question. I think it starts with not only yourself, and we've talked about this a, a lot um, just, just in our, in our short discussion so far, but I think it's also having a, an honest discussion with, with your team members, right. And, and really looking at if, if you work on a team so right so there's gonna be a couple parts to this so if you're if you're working with the team and and if whether you're managing your team or a part of a team what are some of those unwritten rules that perhaps there is some opportunity to 
to, to bring some more transparency on. This is another topic that, that I discuss is about the need to essentially what I call a, a workplace, a team charter, about those expectations on when you're available, when you're going to be online, what is your paid time off vacation policy? Now, I might get some eyes rolling um, at, at this because, because no one takes their time off, but this is an American societal issue, Andrew. The US Travel Association a few years ago said that Americans have left 800 million days of, of paid time off on the, on, the, on the floor. That has significant impact, not only for burnout, but it's also a financial liability for, for organizations because they have to keep that time as, as real dollars on, on the books. And, and so I, I, but first and foremost, I want to make sure that people feel empowered to take time off and that they're having a, a dialogue with their team about that. And what are some of those unwritten rules and expectations about being available, about which communications channels we're going to be focusing. And I know um, in school PR, there's obviously a number of internal communications resources that are there that are becoming standardized. But, you know, if you look at a chart, from 20 years ago on our communications methods, it was, you know, physical phone, you know, landline, maybe a mobile, email, fax, and then seeing each other in, purpose, in person. Now that, that, that list has, you know, quadrupled, right? right Five, right. six, seven times, if you think about uh, Slack and Microsoft Teams and then all the other social channels, it's, it's a lot. So all this to say, what are those unwritten rules? Can you take the summer to chat with your, your team about that so that we can potentially reduce some stress and anxiety as much as we can, right? And I think the other part related to that is, is how, what's our relationship with our, our direct managers? Who are we reporting to, whether it's superintendent, principal, uh, another part of the organization, and having that, that same dialogue with them. And as trusted advisors, how how engaged are we with understanding what are their you know what are what are their goals this year what are they focusing on so that we make sure that that we're being strategic and we're focusing on the priorities that are most important again might see or hear some eye rolls here andrea because the people are going to say everything's important right well yes and there's only so much that we can do what is going to be most important for teachers, students, administrative staff, and really have a, a dialogue and have a have a transparent discussion and be able to say this is th th this is what's important. And because I think we have we tell ourselves in our head this is what's important. This is an issue on the agency side as well. This is a th this is an industry wide issue. When I would be working on three or four different accounts and and I would either be managing them or working with 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 other people everything's important well there's certain things that are important at 9 a.m versus noon versus Monday versus Wednesday versus you know May versus the summer right and if we don't right. have that dialogue it will only spin as as more and more um, important each thing which increases our stress and anxiety and impacts our sleep and down the path. Yeah. Mark, this feels like therapy. And I know th that our listeners need to hear this. Um, I'm not a licensed to... therapist. I want to be very clear. Okay. I was a certified personal learned. trainer. I've, I, I've heard people say some of my stuff feels like therapy. So well, I think it, it's it just, is. it's just talking about it. Right. Yeah. And just like realizing you're not alone. But so yeah, the two things that I right. heard for this summer is work on, you know, that team charter and what I like to call just boundaries. Yeah. And those are like team boundaries. It's personal boundaries. It's team boundaries that, and then prioritizing goals yeah. and really don't assume that, you know, what the priorities are ask. And uh, I always like the advice, like if they want it, you know, something, some new project comes to your desk. It's like, okay, what should I not work on then so that I can work on this? Exactly. There's a ton of one person PR shops out there that are listening right now. And it's like, I can't just keep adding, adding, adding without something, something's got to give. So you've, you've got to prioritize. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And especially in, in social media, Andrea, right? So when I was starting doing, doing work with social media for brands, it was Facebook, 
Twitter, and then it has just grown exponentially. And now we're getting so much pressure on what to do with TikTok. And then there's Clubhouse, and you're going to get an email from a ministry that says, why aren't we on Clubhouse yet? And we're going to have to spend hours and if not days, be able to talk about Clubhouse, what it is the same with TikTok, the same thing for what's new. And so what I love what you're doing in your community is the need to be able to set those boundaries and be able to say, look, these are not going to help your audience or these will, and this is why. That takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of confidence to be able to deliver those, those recommendations. And it's not to be taken lightly, but it is coming back to be able to say, okay, this channel is important or these channels are important. This is why, and setting those, th those boundaries, because this is going to continue to be a challenge in the industry. It's why we love, we love it because no two days are ever the same, but it's also why it's a challenge because we're, we're constantly having to see on top of, of what's going on. Yeah. And in your role as a school communicator, you you serve so many people. You serve your staff, you serve your leadership, you serve the school board, um, you serve the students, you serve the community, you serve, you know, all these organizations and everybody has an opinion and can be asking for things. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but if you have a Facebook page, a personal one, then you are a Facebook expert and you know how the school should be running their Facebook page. We, we have, you know, hundreds, thousands of them out there that are experts, but you who are running your school's page know differently, right? And so it, it can be a real challenge. But um, yeah, I, I do you have any other tips for, you know, again, this podcast specifically around social media, but this, this has been amazing uh, insight for you know, people who are handling social media, but social media really can feel like a 24 seven job. Um, and so that is, it's, that's really challenging. Do you have any other advice that you can, you can kind of share? Cause you've obviously, your career has, has expanded. I mean, I wasn't in this role um, until 2013, 2014 is when I started my business, which still seems like a long time ago, right? But social media started you know, earlier than that. Um, what insight can you have, do you have on that? I, I think that the, the big things are, again, being really good at a, at a few channels is, is a lot better than just trying to, to juggle 10 to 12. Yeah. Because the, 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 the people, it's, it's a two-way road. Obviously, you need to know where your, your fans and followers are at. But once you do that, they will stick with you on those channels, right? And so yeah. if you really want to focus on Facebook, focus on, on Facebook and, and Twitter and or, or Instagram, but don't overwhelm yourself with, 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 with so many channels. And I think obviously just being consistent is, is really important because I think that's, that's just as important, if not more, than the diversity of channels is being consistent with the channels that you're using. So if you know yourself that you're that you can only focus on one channel, just go in, all in on that channel. And the people that follow you are going to go to them as well. The thing about that too, Andrew, is that they themselves won't have to go to a bunch of different channels to find out what's going on, right? So I kind of <laughs> consider that a value for them too. I don't need to go on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram to 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 know everything that's going on. It's going to go uh, to, 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 to one place. I think the other thing is obviously we know video is, is, is growing significantly. And obviously that's not going to change anytime soon. We're seeing a lot of, uh, interest, especially with TikTok and others and having shorter form video, 15, 30 seconds a minute. I think there's an opportunity to really examine kind of the next stage as far as video is concerned. And to me, that is making sure that all videos have closed captioning as, as, as part of that. And I know that's a that's a challenge, I, I, but I, I do look at videos through my LinkedIn feed or elsewhere, and I myself will be looking at those videos that have closed captioning because the reality is a lot of us aren't looking or watching video with with sound on. And I know that more and more channels are offering auto-generated captioning, 
uh, which is great. I think there's another level to make sure that there's some there's some light editing done. Again, back to thinking about the multi-channel strategy versus one. I would rather see a, a brand or a school focus on one channel and do it really, really well and spend the time versus having to not only post content, but just as important, if not more, manage that community. Right. And so that's my one big takeaway is around kind of the, the evolution of video and, and the opportunity to, to insert closed captioning when you can. Yeah, that's great advice. And I just, I really want you to listen to that guys, you know, and again, you're over the summer months. If, if you're trying to juggle five different platforms and you're failing at all of them, you're dropping all the balls. Well, let's just go down to one. And I can guarantee you, we work with hundreds of schools. Facebook's always number one. Um, there's a few school communities where Twitter is really, really big. Um, and Twitter luckily is a little bit less uh, time consuming to manage because there's less comments. Um, so, you know, if you, if you, if you're going to do Twitter and Facebook, that would still be okay. But, um, I'm, I'm, uh, with, with all of the stress and everything, I'm giving you permission to be able to hopefully slim things down a little bit. Um, Mark, our time has flown by. Um, and so we're, we're, uh, kind of nearing the end here. Mark, tell me how you are serving organizations, individuals with, and, and tell me a little bit more about your company. Cause we didn't really dive fully into that yet. So, yeah. So, so chasing the sun, I've, I've had it since the, the fall of 2019. I, I, I do this full time. It's health coaching for communicators and marketers. There are a number of ways that I work with individual and organizations. One is I have one-on-one -on -one coaching with, with, with folks and uh, we talk about everything from, from health coaching to a little bit of career coaching. I, I kind of talk kind of all, all up because I think everything kind of interconnects a bit. Yeah. So people can work with me that way. Um, I love hosting one-off workshops with organizations. I've, I've had the honor of, of connecting with um, the Oregon School PR Association, Indiana. Um, I'm going to be doing something with, with, with Arizona. And then obviously, uh, and then Colorado, which is how I got... I got connected through Chrissy McGee in, in Colorado for COSPRA, and that's kind of how this ball got rolling. So thank you, Chrissy. I want to I want to drop her name as part of this, but I'm also really excited to to speak at Inspra, and so I'm going to lead a 90 minute action lab about designing your own wellness accountability plan on a page. And so we're gonna I'm going to share a lot of data, but we're going to share some actual tips, and in real time, we're going to talk about how to basically design your accountability plan on a page. I've also had the honor of working with, with organizations on a multi-stage workshop series where I, I, I talk about not only your wellness accountability plan, but that workplace charter, what are those unwritten rules and how we can connect those dots. And I've done it in a series of you know one month to two month, three month, and every week in between, I might send little video pieces of content to, to the team with some either some nutrition tips or some exercise tips but mostly around how we're getting through COVID and, and how we're gonna be working in kind of this, this new model. Uh, and then I've worked with organizations to kind of create, if, if, if their employees don't have uh, enough time to sit for a workshop for an hour or two, I can, I can, I can share a, a, what essentially is a kind of a Chasing the Sun content package where they get a series of videos and, and infographics that they can share with with their departments as needed and this is just you know evolved over time and it's just been it's been an incredible honor helping organizations a, a around the world make themselves a priority yeah it's 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 a mental and a physical and uh, you know a life uh you know altering I guess, service that you really provide. And I think that's great. And you guys, this is like specific for school or specific for, for PR professionals, you know, communicators. Um, but certainly you've made a great connection and you, you continue to learn uh, about, you know, the, the unique things within a school, um, which I think are great. So definitely I've got um, in the show notes, I've got um, some resources uh, linked and Chasing the Sun, um, the, the, the website. If people just want to follow you on social media mark where's the best spot yeah so um instagram or twitter i'm at markmo m-a-r-k-m-o-h i'm very active on those channels as well as linkedin just search for me on mark mohammed poor and then you can email me at mark m-a-r-k at chasing the sun pdx.com 
awesome. We'll have all of that linked. Um, so thankful. I'm really excited. I think you should have a full house in um, in New Orleans um, at the Ensbra conference. And, and that part is in person because of the action lab associated with it. Um, but a cr creating that one page kind of accountability to, I'm a big person that I like to put stuff up on my board, you know, to surround me in my office. So I imagine that that is your your intention is we're going to spend 90 minutes together but then this is something that's going to follow you through through your whole year it is so this is the first version that i did when i when i first gave this um i first gave this version of of this in uh in january and for the folks on the on the podcast i'm, I'm holding up a, a framed accountability plan on the page this has evolved the format a bit you're going to see something brand new in july and yeah it's it's just it's been wonderful well, that's awesome. Well, keep up the great work, Mark. I'm excited for people to meet you, start following you, um, and I will certainly tune into some of those resources as well. So thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Andrew. I really appreciate it. All right, everybody. We will see you next time. Thanks so much for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>